Hello everyone, this is Kamlesh from Plugin India. In this brand new series, we analyze, speculate, appreciate and even vent our, vent our frustrations about the Indian electric vehicle industry. Let's get right into it. In this episode, we talk about Mahindra Electric, until recently known as Mahindra Reva, the sole manufacturers of electric car in India. As many know, the Reva electric car company owned by Mr. Chetan Maini was instrumental in developing and manufacturing electric vehicles sold in India and abroad. The iconic GVs in the UK or the Reva I in India were products of the Reva Electric Car Company. When Mahindra purchased Reva, they expected to sell around 50,000 electric cars a year in 7 to 8 years time frame. This was back in 2010. It's 2017 is almost upon us and Mahindra is way off the target. So what did Mahindra's electric car division achieve in 7 years between 2010 and now? It's almost 2017. Uh, Mahindra stopped selling the classic Reva and started investing in creating a superior product which, is, which was the E2. The classic Reva was good. It, it it served its purpose, and I think it's time had it, its time had come, and I think that was a good decision. Mahindra invested in a factory on the outskirts of Bengaluru with a capacity of 30,000 electric cars a year. It's an incredible factory with lots of renewable energy being used and energy efficiency in manufacturing processes. The two-door E2 hatchback powered by solar power was unveiled in March 2013. Who can forget that iconic photograph at the India Gate in Delhi? There was a yellow and green E2 sucking amps from sunshine. That was a powerful image and great marketing and branding there. Uh, a car that could run on solar power captured the imagination of many. The two-door E2 had quickie looks. Uh, they came in multiple bright colors the, and it was a true attention grab, grabber and a conversation starter. Many E2 owners in various Indian cities absolutely love the zippy nature of the car, ease to use in Indian roads and low running costs. Okay, in 2014, the Mahindra, Mahindra Reva showcased a couple of new electric cars. The Electric Vereto sedan, which was a conversion of the classic Vereto, uh, a halo sports car concept, and, D- and DC quick charge stations. Under the vision of Mr. Chetan Maini, we were seeing some awesome, awesome progress being made. The Reva drivetrain was being used in the Mahindra sedan, the Vereto. A new electric sports car called the Halo that really looked cool and turned heads was showcased. Uh, there was a demonstration of DC quick charge stations and quick charge port on the E2. The quick charge port upgrade package was extremely promising for existing E2 customers and even new customers of the E2. Once you had uh, quick charge stations between two important cities or outside cities, you could easily take your electric car and uh, showcase showcase electric mobility beyond cities. At this point, EV enthusiasts were really excited. Within four years of taking over Reva, Mahindra was show- showing awesome progress. Although the sales of the E2 were not encouraging, mainly due to lack of government incentives and with no subsidies provided at that time, progress showed by Mahindra so far was, was very encouraging. It was great progress and the community were excited that under Mr. Chetan Maini's vision and Mahindra's commitment, India could well start an electric vehicle revolution. Then 2015 happened and the big corporate arm of Mahindra took over. Mr. Chetan Maini left Mahindra Reva. He was replaced by Mr. Arun Matthew, the former managing director of Ford in India. This to me was a strange move. Why would you let go of a visionary in Mr. Chetan Maini who is passionate about electric vehicles and appoint a guy who has worked with internal combustion engine based cars all along. With this change, all the work and promise showcased by Mr. Maini in 2014 were gradually reversed. Mahindra, the corporate entity, took over. During the 2016 Auto Expo, Mahindra Reva, rebranded as Mahindra Electric, showcased the way to electric sedan which we saw two years back. In 2014, the Supra Electric uh, uh, passenger van and the cargo van and the E2O sports car. There was no sign of the halo, nor there were demonstrations of quick charge stations. Uh, there was no sign of the word Reva. While the E-Supra was a good development, the E2O sports car was a disappointment. If they, actually, if they absolutely wanted a sports car, they could have invested time and money in development of the halo, which was showcased back in 2014. By 2016, they could have had a finished product and it could have been ready for export and generated much needed revenues for the company. European and American market would prefer a sports car that looks like a Halo than uh, it was a sports thingy. The Halo could have been sold in India too. Just imagine a Halo in Indian roads. It could have raised profile of electric cars and Mahindra electric by several notches. I feel Mahindra wanted to let go of Mr. Chetan May's vision and do their own thing. A bad move in my opinion. Okay, it's almost 2017 now and what, what, what do we have here? The quickie looking two-door E2O is not sold anymore. Uh, Mahindra have made a more corporate and boxy looking E2O Plus, which is more practical with uh, four doors and a larger boot. The e Supro cargo passenger van are good additions, but the pricing is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, I'm going to make another episode of Plugin India Musings just to vent my frustrations on the e Supro pricing. 
there's no news on DC quick charge stations installed nor have the DC quick charge ports been made available to the E2A users. The electric vehicle community honestly believe that believe that installing few quick charge stations between important cities could have really enabled Mahindra Electric to, to sell more number of electric cars. At this point, Mahindra have, have left that to the government uh, and we know that is not going to, that's going to take a lot of time. Imagine having 8 to 10 quick charge stations between important cities. It would raise the profile of electric cars in India and get people to start thinking about alternate mobility. I don't understand why Mahindra did not pursue this. I know that this costs money, but aren't they playing a long-term game here? When you are selling a paradigm-changing car, you got to have paradigm-changing support to get people make that paradigm change. Sadly, Mahindra have been in denial regarding quick charge stations. Hmm. They have even backtracked on offering the DC quick charge port upgrade package to E2 users. Back in 2014, Mr. Chetan Mani tweeted Plugin India saying that the DC quick charge port is backward compatible with older E2s. I show you the tweet right here. But once Mr. Maney left, this demand of quick DC quick charge port upgrade package by E2O owners was quickly brushed aside by Mahindra Electric. The reason they gave was that it's technically complex to fit a DC quick charge port on an E2. Are you kidding me? <laughs> we all know that this was a corporate decision and not a technical challenge. Uh, this episode has really made many people in the community to wonder if Mahindra truly has the best interests of promoting electric vehicles. Nevertheless, uh, Mahindra Electric have been uh, EV community friendly and have answered our queries regularly. They have been supporting the EV community in our EV rallies. They also supported us with ChargePoint database while we were developing the Recharge India mobile app. If you don't have the app, download it now. The mobile app shows you the nearest charge point around your location. Overall, the service center experience has been good, but there are people who are not happy with Mahindra Electric service. I for once have no issues with the service center. They are knowledgeable and they do a good job whenever I leave my car for service. Okay, so let me end this podcast by talking about what many people in the Indian community, EV community feel about Mahindra Electric. Uh, Mahindra Electric needs to publish a vision for the upcoming one or two years and, like Tesla does and work on realizing that vision. The community, especially in Pune, Mumbai, Bangalore, have taken electric cars outside cities, installing community charge points on their own. Uh, please check our website for more information on these community charge points and the Recharge India app. More support for Mahindra regarding charging infrastructure would have convinced more people to buy electric cars. Also, the community feels Mahindra Electric took too long to get the four-door electric car. For almost three and a half years, the E2O was the only electric car being sold, also offering choices to customers uh, with varying price points also helps. And now they have not, they have stopped making the two-door E2O and they're only selling the four-door E2O Plus. So why not have two variants? Why not, uh, why not uh, sell a two-door E2O at a cheaper price point? These, these decisions are baffling to the electric car community here. Many people in the community feel that there are very few upgrade, upgrades offered to the E2O customers. Uh, for almost three and a half years, there, were, there was just a few upgrades, like the power steering upgrade and a couple of software upgrades which didn't make a major difference. Mahindra Electric will need to stop thinking like an internal combustion engine car company. You just need to start thinking like a tech company. Nevertheless, it's a proud feeling that a major Indian automaker is offering real EVs to the Indian market. While other Indian companies like Maruti Tata keep minting money launching antiquated internal combustion engine products that do more harm than good, it's very credible that Mahindra showcases and supports electric vehicles. That we here at Plugin India appreciate. EVs are the future and Mahindra Electric has a first move advantage, but it's about time they showcase a plan and work towards realizing that vision. Now let, let, us, let us know what you think. What could Mahindra have done better over the last 6-7 to seven years? Do comment below, we read every comment. Also, let, let, us, let me know what you think about this new series, Plugin India Musings. Uh, every session and feedback is taken seriously and is appreciated. Uh, we thank you for checking out our content and supporting us. And we wish you a happy new year.